Yeah, so um, I actually think that the um, that this is good for culture. Culture, you know, is like, you know, just languages and things like that. But it's also kind of like in the forest um, when you have, you know, all these sticks out in the woods. You got all these, you know, sticks and branches and anything else. But if you take one one of those sticks and you kind of like sharpen it into um, like a stake or something or you, you make it yours. So you got all the sticks in the woods and none of them mean a thing to you um, except for the one stick where you sharpen. And actually, it makes me think of uh, a good story uh, that makes me think of you. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on. If I can find this real quick. It's called The Prince. The Little Prince. If I can find this. Okay. Yeah. It's The Little Prince. And it says in this book, uh, The Little Prince, that... Because um, The Little Prince, he... Uh, he leaves his rose behind. He has to. He has to go uh, travel all these different worlds, and he leaves his rose behind um, on his planet. And in the end, he kind of figured out that there, there's a, a ton of roses out there, but the uh, the one rose that made him feel special. See. See, this is when the little prince sees all these different roses. There's a lot of different roses, right? So you got a ton of roses. Um. But his rose was was his rose, and he knew that his rose, uh, you know, specifically, she she wanted uh, a glass case, and she wanted um, she always thought she was cold, and she had these little thorns, and she thought that she could use the thorns to uh, attack any intruders. So so he says something like, even though there's uh, a bunch of there's a bunch of flowers in the world. Because this rose was his that made it more special. So so that's culture. I guess that's what I feel like I'm doing here. I, I don't know if there's much, you know, use to it besides just to you. But that's that's the point, you know. You're, you're, you're the rose. You're my rose. Um, I don't know. You know. So the story I want to tell you. I was doing some ancestry research, and I told you a little bit about my family. I got some cousins, and my cousins, they don't, they don't like black people. They're like, oh, I hate black people. Uh, so my cousins are kind of, I don't know, they're mean, and they're, they're hate-filled. Um, but the, uh, uh, the thing I want to say is, like, they wave Confederate flags, and they're, they're doing all this other stuff, but we're Germans. Um, the Gripschober family is Germans. Gripschober is a gr uh, German name. And the, the Gripschevers came to America in 1869. 1869. So the Confederate flag was during the Civil War, which is in 1861 to 1865. So if we came over in 1869, then there's no way we were Confederates. So they are, uh, they've bought into this uh, culture and this history and heritage that's not even theirs. It's not even theirs. It's, it's somebody else's. Because Germans... When they came to America, they were on the Union side, so they fought against the Confederates. But they waved the Confederate flag because they're racist and because they don't like black people. And it's really stupid because in Kentucky, there's only there's like 99% white and 1% black. So for them to hate anybody in such a minority is, I don't know, is bullshit. It, it pisses me off. But like you said, I'm thinking about, you know, the good, the good. And so the good... Um, is, is me kind of learning about my German heritage. And Germans have done a lot. They created a printing press, and they've done... I mean, they're not like the mother of civilization, so they're not Egypt. Um, but Germans have done a lot. You know, they've made printing presses, hamburgers, hot dogs. Frankfurt, Kentucky, the capital of Kentucky, is, um, uh, is a German word. So, so I don't know. I think it's kind of weird. It would be like somebody loving their oppressors. It would be like... Um, the black people being Ku Klux Klan, or it'd be like na the Native Americans being cowboys. You know, if the the cowboys killed Native Americans, so why would the Native American be a cowboy? And same for black people, you know, uh, the Ku Klux Klan killed black people, so why would a black person wear a Ku Klux Klan hat? So it's like they they love their oppressors, they love their masters. And it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. And I think it's because they don't really know about their German hi history. They don't know anything about themselves. Um, they've, uh, they've ignored 
their German heritage, and they were, you know, we had two world wars. Uh, world War One was against Germany, and World War Two was against Germany. So if you were German here, then you couldn't be, you couldn't say that you were German, and if you were German here, you couldn't say that you were for the the German cause because that would make you a traitor, and therefore, you know, you would get you get beat up. One more thing. Oh yeah, and I was thinking too, like it's easier kind of do these videos when when you have a list, when you write up, when you write a you know, when you write a list out, I, I, I hope, I, I think you can probably understand me without being, you know, as, uh, animated, you know, as animated, um, but if you could write a list out and say, okay, I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to talk about that, and I'm going to talk about this, I think that would be, that's probably how I'm going to do it, uh, you know, um, in my mind, I got like three things I wanted to tell you, and the last thing was this book, Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paulo Freire. So I don't know if you've checked it out, but I think this book has changed my life. And uh, the, the main message is that, you know, everybody's either the oppressors or the oppressed. And humanity can only come from the oppressed because the oppressors think of uh, people that they control and manipulate as just an object, just a control. But the oppressed love the oppressor. So the uh, humanity can only come from the oppressed. Um, there's a bunch more, but that's just one one of many um, uh, good pieces of knowledge. It's it's changed my philosophy on everything, and actually I did want to do some sort of um, write up and some sort of video for everybody, not not just to uh, my Egyptian rose, not to my Princess Jasmine and uh, my Isis, my Egyptian goddess Isis. Um, I don't know if you like princess or queen better. Princess, you know, I think it's more fitting because you're young and youthful and beautiful. But Queen has got more, you know, more, more respect. It's more respecting sounding. So, so that's it. <laughs> so I guess uh, there's a little, there's a little piece of me and my German history, uh, my background, and two books that I like. Paula Freire, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. If you get a, if you get a chance, uh, check it out. Okay. All right. All right, Amal Gali. Um, hopefully you get some, you know, I don't know. I'd like to video chat with you sometimes uh, instead of just talking to myself. But this is kind of good, too, because there's no law in the conversation. We are not just staring at each other, but I can say, da, 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 and here it is. Uh, but sometimes it is nice to have that back and forth. Um, but if you don't have that back and forth, then you can actually put more thought behind it and say exactly what it is that you want to say. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> trying to smile more. I don't smile as enough as I should. So. But anyways, I'm all golly. I'm all, I'm all, I'm all. Till next time. Peace.